Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're going to be talking about comparing some of the different mining algorithms that are used in major cryptocurrencies. So all of the cryptocurrencies that we're going to talk about use proof of work mining to secure their blockchains, but there are some differences in the algorithms that they use to actually do that proof of work. I'd like to give a shout out to one of my YouTube subscribers, user XOR, who actually suggested this topic in a YouTube comment. So thank you for giving me uh, the idea to do this. So first, let's talk about the general idea behind proof of work mining. What proof of work mining does is it has different nodes across the network that want to contribute to network security run a essentially a guessing problem using one-way functions called hash functions. So there's a sort of mathematical problem presented to the nodes uh, involving some block data. And uh, what the nodes have to do is they have to do a bunch of guesses using their computing power and their resources and try to find an answer to that problem. Now, this problem is really difficult to find an answer, but it's super easy for anyone else on the network to verify once an answer is found. And so the idea is, uh, all of these legitimate nodes on the network are trying to solve this problem and contributing a bunch of resources. So for somebody to pull off a fraud, like uh, an illegitimate transaction uh, including, included in a block, they would have to outcompute the rest of the network that's acting honestly. And it becomes really difficult to do at scale. So essentially, when somebody does all this guessing work and finds an answer to the problem, uh, because they've expended so many uh, resources in the form of computing, power, and memory, it essentially proves to everybody else on the network that they've done all this work because they've found an answer to a problem that can only be found by guessing. And so that's why it's called proof of work. But there are some differences in approaches to proof of work algorithms that different blockchains use. And they all have sort of different pros and cons when it comes to security and uh, centralization and barriers to entry for people that want to do mining. So let's first talk about the mining algorithm used in Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin BTC, and that's SHA-256 mining. So this was the original sort of proof of work algorithm that came into existence with Bitcoin being sort of the first uh, cryptocurrency out there. So this is a pretty straightforward algorithm. The way this works is there is block header data and miners add a nonce, which is the name for their random guess for the problem, to that block data. They run that through uh, the SHA-256 algorithm and output a block hash. And in order for this answer to the proof of work problem to be valid, the block hash treated as a 256-bit number has to be less than the difficulty target that's specified by the Bitcoin network. And so uh, it turns out, you know, as this difficulty target gets smaller as a number, it takes more and more computing power and guesses to find an answer to the proof of work problem. So this is only a computationally hard algorithm. SHA-256 doesn't really require a ton of memory to do, and it's really just limited by the amount of computing operations that can be done uh, in the SHA algorithm. And so what this leads to is over time as the difficulty target has gotten a lot harder as it's adjusted by the Bitcoin software, uh, it leads to a sort of um, centralization or a higher barrier to entry for people that want to do mining. Because in the very early days of Bitcoin, you could just mined using a computer CPU. The difficulty wasn't that high, and so you know everybody who was on the network was just running this on their PCs. And uh, eventually, as this got harder, uh, people started using graphic units, so GPUs. And now, the only way to even remotely profitably mine on the Bitcoin network is to use what's called an ASIC, or Application Specific Integrated Circuit. These are specialized pieces of hardware that are really expensive, and they're designed to really do one thing and one thing only, and that's SHA hashes. So there's now a much higher barrier to entry for people that want to contribute to the Bitcoin network security. You really can only do it if you have like a warehouse full of these ASIC, uh, you know, ASIC computers, and 
you also generally need to be involved in a mining pool. So you have to be a part of a whole group of people that are trying to solve blocks and split up the reward. Even if you went out and bought an ASIC miner to run in your basement, the chances of you finding a block hash uh, without being a part of a pool are pretty negligible. It's, it's really not gonna happen. So a lot of people claim this is somewhat problematic because everyday people that wanna contribute to Bitcoin security uh, really can't do that in the form of mining. They can only maybe run a full node and help uh, validate and propagate transactions as they're broadcast throughout the network. So one of the first major alternatives to Bitcoin that came out was Litecoin. And Litecoin decided it wanted to try and address this problem of high barrier uh, uh, to entry for mining. And so what they did is they introduced the use of a uh, harder, a memory hard mining algorithm that uses the script hashing algorithm. Now, script is actually not a pure hash function. It's really a key derivation function. So what script is used for is when you have somebody enter like a password in an online website, for example, they run that through script and then store that resulting key in a database or something like that. It might not be exactly how that works, but the idea is that the script operation takes up a lot of memory and it's kind of slow compared to SHA, which can be computed really fast. So if you were trying, if you got a database full of password hashes that were done with script. It would take you a long, long time to try and, you know, brute force that password database compared to using a SHA uh, algorithm. So that's kind of where that came from. But Litecoin's creators use that to their advantage in trying to solve the centralization of mining and high barrier to entry. Because again, this is a memory hard problem. So script is designed to take up a lot of memory and have to do a lot of read and writes from memory. And so what that means is it's more limited by the amount of memory in the system that's doing the mining and the input and output operations to that memory than it is the computing operations. And so again, that means that it's not necessarily going to require an ASIC to do Litecoin mining. Now, a lot of people still use like GPUs and pretty high-end hardware to do Litecoin mining. Um, I had a professor in college that had some, a specialized rig to do this, but it's more feasible to mine Litecoin as an individual user than it is to mine, say, Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency using SHA-256 mining. Now, the third approach, which I think is pretty interesting, is similar to Litecoin, but goes a lot further into sort of a custom memory hard implementation. And this is what Ethereum uses. Ethereum uh, created its own custom uh, proof of work algorithm called Ethash. Uh, and this is a custom version of a sort of algorithm called Dagger Hashimoto. And uh, this was developed by uh, Thaddeus Dreija, who uh, was involved, I believe, in pro pro uh, proposing the Litecoin, or no, sorry, not Litecoin, the Lightning Network on Bitcoin. And of course, Vitalik Buterin, uh, one of the founders and authors of the Ethereum paper and implementation. And so what this does is every so many blocks that Ethereum is processing, uh, Ethash generates a really large data set that is based on data that's included in that sort of n blocks that it's taking a look at. And so this is always changing and has to be recomputed by mining nodes. And there's a lot of input output operations that have to be done on this data set to do the mining. So again, much like script on Litecoin, this is a mining algorithm that is more limited by memory uh, IO operations than it necessarily is computing power. And that's by design. But part of the thing that makes Ethash interesting is that uh, Vitalik specifically designed a part of this system so that the mining itself is very memory intensive, but uh, for end users running full nodes to validate the result of that problem is a lot less memory intensive. So I thought that was sort of interesting in the approach that Ethereum takes. So again, overall, when it comes to proof of work mining, the general idea is the same across blockchains. The idea is you have a problem that involves a lot of computing and memory resources to solve through guessing. 
And so by putting some skin in the game, by putting resources into the game, all the people mining are helping secure the network against fraud. Because somebody that wants to try, out, try and propagate an invalid transaction on the blockchain or fake history would have to do a lot of outcomputing uh, compared to everybody on the network that's acting honestly. And since transactions are linked to the previous uh, blocks, uh, this also gets harder and harder to do as you go back in history, which is why people say things like, if you have a really big transaction, wait six blocks before you consider it to be totally irreversible, that sort of thing. But there are pros and cons to each of these different approaches to mining. And so different cryptocurrencies have changed the way that they do mining from sort of the original Bitcoin implementation to address what they see as problems with barrier entry for mining and centralization and that sort of thing. So as always, I hope you found this tutorial interesting and informative. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and consider uh, supporting my work through Patreon or Spreadshirt or cryptocurrency donations. And as always, thank you very much for listening.